Welcome to another episode of Eric Great Whiskey Studies, and in this video, going to do a review of the Hazelburn 10 year old Cameltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. But before I get into this whiskey, I'm going to tell you about the profile of Spring Make Distillery, their core range, and this whiskey. Springbank Distillery is located in Campbelltown on the Kintyre Peninsula in Western Scotland. Springbank Distillery was established by the Reed Brothers in 1828. The Reed Brothers sold the distillery in 1837 to John and William Mitchell. Later, the son of John Mitchell joined the business, which became J and A Mitchell. Springbank Production. Springbank is the only Scottish distillery to perform every step in the whiskey making process from malting the barley to bottling the spirit in Scotland. Springbank Distillery produces three brands, Hazelburn, Springbank, and Longro. The primary differences in these three brands is in how the barley is peated, or whether it's peated or not, and the spirit is distilled. Springbank's water source is Cross Hill Lock. 100% of the malted barley comes from Springbank Distillery's malting floor. Springbank produces three variances of malt. Hazelburn is unpeated and receives 30 hours of hot air. Springbank is medium peated and it receives 6 hours of peat smoke and 30 hours of hot air. Longro is heavily peated and receives 48 hours of peat smoke. The distillery uses a cast iron open top mash tun. They have six boat skin large washbacks to ferment for 72 to 110 hours. Springbank has three stills, one wash still which is direct fired and has a rummager to prevent burning and two spirit stills which are steam heated. Each brand is distilled differently. Hazelburn is triple distilled to produce a lighter, higher ABV and product of 74 to 76% alcohol by volume. Springbank is two and a half times distilled. During the distillation process, some of the low wines are collected before the second distillation and then mixed back into the faints for another distillation. This means that some parts of the spirit have been through the stills twice and some parts three times, hence the half distillation. The spirit is distilled to around 71 to 72% alcohol by volume. Long Grow is double distilled, leaving a heavier smoky distillate that leaves the still at 68% alcohol by volume. Springbank Distillery uses worm tub condensers for the wash still and shell and tube condensers for the spirit stills. The spirit is then aged primarily in ex bourbon and ex sherry casks in both Old Dunnage and a new racked warehouse. The Springbank Core Range. All whiskeys from Springbank Distillery are non chill filtered and have natural color. The Hazelburn 10 year old Camelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Aged in 100% bourbon casks and is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Hazelburn 12 year old Sherrywood Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged in 100% sherry cast, is bottled at 49.9% alcohol by volume. The Hazelburn 21 year old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged in 80% bourbon, 10% sherry, 10% port cast, is bottled at 43.2% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 10 year old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged in 60% bourbon cast, 40% sherry cast, spotted at 46% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 12 year old cast strength Campbelltown single malt scotch whiskey. It is peated and is aged in 60% bourbon cast, 40% sherry cast, bottled at 54.1% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 15 year old Campbelltown single malt scotch whiskey, aged in 100% sherry cast, bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 18-year-old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged in 65% sherry cask, 15% rum cask, 
20% bourbon cast, and it's a bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 21-year-old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Asian 45% bourbon cask, 20% rum cask, 20% sherry cask, and 15% port cask, is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 25-year-old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Asian 50% bourbon cask, 50% sherry cask, and it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 30-year-old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Asian 80% bourbon cask, 20% sherry cask, and it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Springbank 11-year-old Local Barley Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Asian 35% bourbon cask, 10% rum cask, 55% sherry cask, and it's bottled at 55.1% alcohol by volume. The Springbank PX 10-year-old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Asian 100% Pedro Jimenez sherry cask, and it's bottled at 55% alcohol by volume. Longro Peated Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged in X bourbon cask and sherry cask, it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Long Row Red Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This is a limited release bottled at cask strength. Each year, a different type of red wine cask is used to mature the whiskey, with the latest release spending seven years in a bourbon cask, followed by four years in tawny port cask. It is bottled at 57.5% alcohol by volume. The Long Row 18 year old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Asian 100% sherry cask, it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. The Long Grow 21 year old Campbelltown Single Malt Scotch Whiskey 2022 edition is aged in 30% bourbon cask, 60% sherry cask, and 10% Chardonnay cask, bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. So Hazelburn is the name of a distillery uh, that closed many years ago in Campbelltown, but the building is still there in Campbelltown. When I went through the Spring Rink Whiskey School in July 2023, we did a history walk through uh, Campbelltown and saw a lot of the uh, closed distilleries. At one time, there were over 30 of them. Now there's three, but there's two more in uh, planning. In fact, one of them is called Witchburn, if I recall correctly. So, there's a potential that Campbelltown could be on the rise again. Springbank is not just an old school distillery doing things in such a way to produce the best whiskey that there can be. There's been a lot of craziness about Spring <laughs> Springbank. Uh, I mean, it used to be you could see Springbank on the shelf at just about any store. You could pick one up at any time, and all of a sudden. Seems like overnight, all the bottles disappeared and everybody wants spring bank. It's become a cult distillery. But the distillery isn't just doing things old school because that's the way to make whiskey. It's better doing it that way. They are a holdout. It is almost like a sense of defiance against all the closures in Campbelltown. They're saying, hey, we are not going down and we are going to preserve something uh, that has almost been lost here in Cowantown. In fact, almost been completely lost in all of Scotland, which is a grain-to-bottle production. They are the only distillery that does everything from grain to uh, malting to... Uh, well, by grain, I don't mean they're growing barley out, out in front. Uh, they do source their barley. But they, they, start, they malt their own barley and do their own mashing, distilling, aging, and so forth. Everything's done right there. Which has its cons because in terms of effectiveness, it's a lot more um, manpower intense or person power intense. It requires a lot more hands to work on it rather than using machinery. It is self-limiting as to how much you can produce. And they're running out of storage space. They have, an, they have a, a dunnage warehouse and they have a rack warehouse. You saw there in the notes. And it's almost at capacity. They can't produce enough in order to keep up with the demand. In fact, when, when I went through the school, we could get a 10-year-old 
and a 15 year old. And for a brief moment, we could get this 10 year old. But other than that, everything sold out. And in the morning, when we would go to work in the distillery, there'd be a long line out in front of the distillery of people wanting to buy cage bottles. There's a cage there in which they uh, every day put a few bottles or uh, select bottles uh, that you can buy. A lot of it would be uh, long grow. So I already had uh, a few spring bank bottles at home. I had the 10, I had the 15. I wanted the 12 year old cask strength, which I can get here in San Francisco Bay Area for $500. I'm not spending 500 bucks on a 12 year old cask strength, but it's absolutely fantastic whiskey. There is the uh, wash back bar there. So you can do a lot of tasting there. And I get to taste uh, the, the 12 cast drink, 18 year old, the 21 year old, and, and a lot of other whiskeys there. So you can do that if you're there in town. But I was able to get this 10 year old. I said, you know what? Hazel Burns, hard to come by uh, where I live. If you can find this, you know, like 130 bucks or something like that, but it's probably going to be even more than that if you can even find it. This is an absolute superb whiskey that takes some patience uh, and it takes some aeration. When I first opened it, uh, I was a little surprised because I know it's not peated and yet there's this earthy character to it. It's almost like a dustiness and I've been thinking about trying to figure out what is that character. It's not peat, since it's not peat, it's not, okay, well, could there be some sort of remnant left over? Da, 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 nah, nah, no, it's not that. Could it be the way they're doing their cuts uh, so that uh, some phenols are sticking around in the cuts and it's a little bit of the tails going in there? No, um, I don't think it's that. What I think it is, what I think it is, it has to do with their direct fire stills. Their wash still is a direct fire. They're using um, a gas uh, lit, it's not lit by coal. And then there's a rummager, uh, which goes around inside the still in order to keep spirit from sticking to the side of the still and becoming burnt. And there's actually, you can't see it. If you visit the distillery, you can't see it. It's behind the still. There's a bell that, <laughs> because there's an arm that goes through uh, the still that turns the rummager around. And so that the stillman knows that it's still operating, it's going clank, 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 clank. That way, if he can hear it, he knows the rummager is still working, so he's not having any problems. So you can get a character from Direct Fire Stills. Glenn Fittick has Direct Fire, Glenn Farkless has Direct Fire, and Springbank has Direct Fire. I believe they are the only three in Scotland that are still using direct fire. If anyone knows of any other direct fire uh, still distilleries in Scotland, put a comment down below. But there is this character, it's slight earthiness. It's, it's not a burnt smell. It's not a dirt smell. It's just a slight earthy character. Immediately behind that is grapefruit. Rarely do I ever smell grapefruit in a Scotch whiskey. It reminds me of a Sauvignon Blanc. If you've had a, a Sauvignon Blanc wine, it's a little bit like that. Some pineapple. So it's a combination of a Sauvignon Blanc and pineapple. Some floral notes. Perhaps just a touch of vanilla. A little bit of spice. Maybe baking spices. On the palate. Wow. The development on this is absolutely fascinating. It's fantastic. If this whiskey didn't have that just a little bit of an earthy character, a little bit of a toasty character, you know, I'm, I'm looking, I'm using different descriptions to try to get at what I'm a sense smelling and tasting. If it didn't have that, this might be sort of a ordinary whiskey but it's that little bit of toastiness, uh, a little bit of almost like a dirt, dusty character, almost like burnt dust, that's giving it some uh, interesting uh, notes there. 
Then the, uh, I almost said the Sonia Blanc kicks in. Then the grapefruit kicks in along with some pineapple. Then the vanilla and then this a little bit of spice shows up on the back end. A little bit of cinnamon, uh, a little bit of saltiness, just a hint of saltiness shows up on the back end. It's got a really nice evolution. One of the main things I like in a whiskey is if there's a different experience up front, in the middle, and into the finish, and the finish is fairly long. I'm still tasting it now. On the very tail end of the finish, you don't necessarily notice it when you first swallow, but as the finish is sort of lingering and fading out, a little bit of mint comes in. In fact, a little bit of mint and maybe a little bit of herbal tea as well. Hmm. The other thing I like about this is it is very, very, very distinctive. Tasting this blind and trying to figure out where it's from, I can't think of any other distillery that is anything like this. Maybe Glen Turret, maybe Glen Turret is a little bit like this. Maybe Glen Geary is a little bit like this. Uh, but since, uh, but not really. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, that's a bit of a stretch, but I'm trying to come on. Someone who has just something, a little, a slight waft of an earthy, might, some people might think it's, that's, ooh, it's a little bit peaty or a little bit smoky. You could interpret it as smoke if you didn't know how it was made. You might think that's just a waft of smoke, which Glen Turret and Glen Gary have, which is why I think closest neighbors in terms of on, on a profile. Moderate viscosity, so it's not thin, it's not super thick, but it has enough weight on the mid palate to have enough, just a little bit of a mouth coating feel and a nice weight on the mid palate. So I like the transitions, I like the complexity, I love the length of finish, and I like the mouth feel. It's got everything going on there. It's just an absolutely uh, fantastic whiskey. This is one of those whiskeys that make you stop and think. This is a thinker's whiskey. Uh, and that's probably what I like most, particularly if I'm by myself, reading a book, sitting by the fire or something like that, that this is a whiskey in which if you and I were hanging out, we might be talking about the weather. We might be talking about work. We might be talking about sports. We might be talking about all kinds of things, or movies or music or anything like that. But once we taste this, we'd stop talking about whatever else we're talking about, and we'd start talking about the whiskey. And, and, and what we're getting from it because it's, it's really an attention uh, grabber. What I'm going to give it in terms of score, I'm going to go 92 points, 92 points. This is absolutely fantastic. And of course, that's probably going to tick a lot of people off because they're going to say, I can't get it in my neighborhood. I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Not much I can do about that. Search online, you can Google, and I'm sure you can find it somewhere and have it shipped and all that. Uh, and there's nothing I can do about the prices, and I got to call it like it is, but this is an absolute fantastic whiskey. I did was able to taste some older ones when I was there at the distillery that are even better, but those would be even more difficult to get. So I brought back one, which I didn't have in my collection, and which is probably, relatively speaking, in comparison to all the other hazel burns, uh, would be the uh, so-called easiest to find. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this video. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you have not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified for when I go live or post a new video. And until next time, slanja. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.